What's up guys? There's a new time travel slasher called Time Cut. I just re-watched Totally Killer to kind of compare the two and we're going to mainly review Time Cut but I'll definitely throw in some Totally Killer comparisons along the way. So anyway, let's get started. Time Cut stars Madison Bailey, Antonia Gentry, and is directed by Hannah McPherson. In the future, do they catch the guy? What's up guys, welcome to a brand new 2024 review. We're gonna review Time Cut. I definitely had heard um, some rumblings about this movie, uh, actually like maybe a month ago, before it even came on Netflix, just because the elephant in the room it was a time travel slasher and a lot of people were getting confused that this actually came out before totally killer and a lot of people were throwing dirt at the movie because they pretty much called it a totally killer ripoff uh, only to find out later that this movie was actually filmed in 2021 before totally killer I did my own research on this movie to try to find out what was going on behind there. And the only thing I could figure was that Helena Hutchins did the cinematography on this movie. She was one of two that did that. And um, if you don't know who she is, she was tragically killed uh, on set of Rust starring Alec Baldwin, by Alec Baldwin. Just a horrible incident. And it made everybody think back to Brandon Lee from The Crow, similar incident. Uh, but this was the movie that she did right before that movie, I believe. So maybe that had a little bit of influence as far as holding back on releasing this movie. Uh, maybe for legal reasons. I don't know. I, I doubt it. If I had to go quality-wise, this is f uh, the lesser of the two. Totally Killer is just so much better. So much better. So anyway, let's jump right into this. Give you a an obvious quick plot synopsis. Uh, the, the plot is just so damn similar with a few differences. Our main character is Lucy. She had a sister by the name of Summer that was tragically killed by a, uh, a serial killer, a uh, slasher killer, 20 years ago. Lucy was born after Summer, so she didn't really get to know her sister at all. But she is, of course, aware of the tragedy because the whole town is, it's a small town. And so she's been kind of going through the motions her whole life because living in the shadow of this, so, of course, she comes upon this time machine, which sends her back 20 years to 2003, or 21 years, I guess, because this movie takes place in 2024, which, little side note, you can obviously tell that they did some, uh, some dubbing in this movie to try to catch it up to the year 2024 since it was filmed in 2021, probably set for a 2023 release to be exactly 20 years later. But we all know Totally Killer came out that year. And maybe, you know, if I had to wager, they didn't want to compete with Totally Killer. But Totally Killer took place in the 80s, whereas this movie took place in 2003. And that is sort of one of my problems with the movie. I think when you compare 2003 to now, especially from a, like a fashion standpoint, is there really that big of a difference? Maybe there is. Maybe I'm just not up on my, my fashion sense. But, you know, there's one scene in the movie where Summer tells Lucy, oh, you're, you're actually wearing that? And, you know, from my point of view, looking at what Lucy is wearing, is it really that shocking in 2003? I don't think so. Not at all. Uh, and then, of course, they do um, a little fashion montage. And it looks like they're trying to lean more on the 80s and 90s as opposed to 2003, which, again, doesn't really feel that different from now and maybe that's just a point that the 80s and the 90s are just so much more irresistible to go back to than any time in the millennium unless there's a specific reason a spe specific event that happened in that time frame that is you know specific to the plot of the movie which there really isn't other than the fact that her sister is or would have been 20 years older than her. I guess you have to kind of keep it within a believable time frame. Yeah, there are siblings uh, that are like 20 years apart. It does happen, especially in big families where you got like freaking five, six kids. But how she gets back to 2003 is she goes into this barn, which was the scene of the crime. And, you know, there's these it's flowers and memoriam and all that stuff. And when she gets there, she gets in the barn and there is a time machine 
And so she, you know, it's set to that specific date. So she goes back in time accidentally and she ends up back there. And then that's where it gets kind of fun. You know, we love to, to uh, follow our main characters uh, when they are a fish out of water, which um, Lucy is here. Uh, Lucy is about, she looks like she's two feet taller than her sister. That's kind of strange, kind of funny. But that, that's possible. It could happen. I'm actually a head taller than both my parents. So I can't really fault the movie there. But I guess visually speaking, it is a little off-putting. And uh, that's me being uh, really nitpicky. Also, this movie leans more on drama than it does comedy. You know, there's a lot of comedy in Totally Killer. And I think this specific premise suits itself for comedy. It's just so fun. There, I think the jokes are quite easy. They can almost just write themselves when you're comparing, you know, the 80s to today. And so that was what was so fun about Totally Killer. Whereas this movie, yeah, there's a little bit of comedy, but it feels more after school special than anything because of how serious it takes itself. And I think that was probably a mistake. The characters do feel kind of, I don't know, tired. Now, there is this nerdy character by the name of Quinn uh, who helps Lucy figure out the time machine and how to get her back and they have to collect some some antimatter. Quinn had a, a crush on Summer and so of course they're going to plant a red herring directly on him and outside of Quinn I don't think there's too many other suspects that you can really lean on. Yeah there's one or two uh, but um, I think the obvious choice might be Quinn and I'm not going to tell you if he does end up being the killer but as far as keeping you on your toes uh, with guessing who the killer is, this ain't Scream. You know, they don't throw, you know, 15 different red herrings here and there. And again, that's not stating that Quinn is the killer. I'm just stating from a writing standpoint. I thought they could have been a little bit more clever with the, you know, the reveal. But part of the fun of these types of films is the inevitability of them. Where is this all going to land? Is our uh, main character going to get uh, back to the present I think Back to the Future does this the best with creating a nice surprise. Wondering, are the parents going to be different based on what has happened? I don't think this movie lives up to that expectation. And if it sounds like I'm being hard on this movie, it's because I am. I think this is going to be totally forgettable. Um, no pun intended with totally. Whereas I just gave Totally Killer a second watch a couple days ago, actually on Halloween. And man, that movie is a freaking blast. It is so fun and highly rewatchable. It is set on Halloween, which is really cool. Uh, and this movie, again, it just doesn't stand out in any category whatsoever. It's just kind of there. Is it boring? Sometimes, but you know, it's, it's short. It gets to the point pretty quickly. But again, there's just nothing that really stands out about the movie. And it's kind of a shame that you know it's competing with totally killer which is totally awesome if you're competing with another movie with a, a similar premise i say you know what uh, be proud of your movie go hard in the paint you can have a, a, a dante's peak and a volcano you can have an armageddon and a deep impact this stuff happens all the time so both can exist but i'm gonna give this movie a low humdrum it's just fine it's there uh, the the uh, the actors they do the best they can with uh, the the material that they're given but again, it's just, it's really forgettable. So yeah, that is my review for Time Cut. Um, looking forward to hearing your thoughts on Time Cut in the comments. Also be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, which by the way, we have been getting a ton of requests for Killer Flicks lately uh, because Facebook has somehow started pushing our group in uh, like recommended groups. And you know, that's, that's pretty cool. It's, it's really nice to get all these new people coming into the group, it's fun. And I think the, the group is better than ever. Uh, also, you can become a channel member uh, and you can follow me on uh, Patreon as well. Support me. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and rum dum out.